Good evening, and welcome to tonight's meeting of the Commonwealth Club of California. I'm David Kennedy, a professor of history emeritus at Stanford and co-director, along with Richard White, of the Bill Lane Center for the American West at Stanford University, and I'm your moderator for this evening's program. Uh, this program tonight is being held in association with the California Historical Society, and it is now my high and solemn duty to remind you to turn off all cell phones, PDAs, and any other noise-making devices. We'll be getting underway in just a moment, but first uh, I've been asked to tell you about some upcoming programs. Uh, next Tuesday, June 14th, uh, Cecile Richards, uh, the CEO of Planned Parenthood, will discuss the status of women's health care in the United States, and this will be a 6 p.m. program here at the Commonwealth Club in San Francisco. And on Monday, June 27th, uh, Congressman Steny Hoyer, the Democratic whip of the uh, United States House of Representatives, will discuss how to create more jobs in America. Uh, this will be a 10.30 a.m. program, free for members and also here at the club in San Francisco. And for more information on all of these upcoming programs, please go to commonwealthclub.org. And it's my special pleasure tonight to extend a special welcome to any new Commonwealth Club members who are here this evening. And if you're not yet a member, it's a great time to join. Members enjoy many benefits, including free attendance at events held at club headquarters on Mondays and Fridays, a subscription to the Commonwealth Magazine, and a worldwide travel program. And I also want to mention the copies of Richard White's new book that we'll be discussing in just a few minutes. Uh, entitled Railroaded, the Transcontinentals and the Making of Modern America, are on sale in the lobby where Richard will be pleased to sign copies immediately following the program. Now, on to today's program. You'll find question cards uh, on your seats, and please write down any questions you have for uh, Professor White, and these cards will be collected during the program, and uh, I will put the questions to Richard as you put them to me. And now we'll pause for one moment and then begin the program for our radio, television, and internet uh, audiences. This is the pause. <laughs> Those of you who've been around know the drill here, you're gonna hear some repetition. Good evening and welcome to tonight's meeting of the Commonwealth Club of California, the place where you are in the know. You can find us on the internet at commonwealthclub.org. I'm David Kennedy, Professor of History Emeritus uh, and co-director of the Bill Lane Center for the American West at Stanford University, and your moderator for this program. And tonight's program is being held in association with the California Historical Society. And it's now my pleasure to introduce our distinguished guest, Richard White, also Professor of History at Stanford University and co-director uh, at the Bill Lane Center for the American West with me and the author of the new book, Railroaded, The Transcontinentals and the Making of Modern America. Uh, Richard is, to be more precise, the Margaret Byrne Professor of History at Stanford, where he has been since 1998. He previously taught, among other places, at the University of Utah and the University of Washington, where he took his PhD. Uh, my wonderful colleague, Richard White, is widely regarded as a leading, one might well say, the leading scholar in three distinct but related fields, the history of the American West, uh, environmental history, uh, a subset of our discipline that he helped to pioneer, and Native American history. Uh, he has been the recipient of a MacArthur Genius Award, and he is the author of several notable works, including uh, a, a book entitled It's Your Misfortune and None of My Own, published in 1991, a general sweeping comprehensive history of the American West, uh, a, a book entitled The Middle Ground, Indians, Empires, and Republics in the Great Lakes Region, 1650 to 1815, also published in 1991. Uh, and one of my favorites as a native Northwest, Pacific Northwesterner, uh, The Organic Machine, The Remaking of the Columbia River, published in 1996. And now we have uh, his new book, Railroaded, The Transcontinentals and the Making of Modern America. Uh, the book has already been reviewed in the Boston Globe just this last weekend, where it was described as a scathing and wonderful new book. 
and I think the full implications of the scathing part, as well as the wonderful, uh, are likely to be uh, clear as we proceed with this uh, discussion. Uh, I should probably note at the outset that the book is not the classic story about building the transcontinental railroad. It's a story that's been told many times, and very ably, in fact. Richard's story essentially begins when the railroads are virtually finished, and his uh, history is really a history of how they were operated in the first 30 years or so of their existence in the last decades of the 19th century. So it's important to keep that in mind, I think, that this is not another epic saga of building the road, but how the, the several transcontinental lines were actually moderated, uh, operated. So uh, Richard, you've entered a field of uh, study here that uh, others have uh, been in before you, I think, especially of the work of Alfred D. Chandler and Robert Fogel, names that might not be familiar to this audience but are familiar to historians who have studied the railroads as the precursors of the modern American economy and the modern corporation. Uh, your view is a little different, and I hope we'll get to that, the differences you have with Fogel and Chandler and others. But uh, to begin, maybe you could say something about how, given your very large uh, corpus of work on uh, issues having to do with the West and with Native Americans and the Columbia River and so on. How does this, your, how did your interest in railroads grow out of your, your previous, previous scholarly work, or maybe it grew out of some other source altogether? No, uh, the book comes after a book I actually wrote about my mother, which is about history and memory. And um, I wanted to get back to the American West, and what I wanted was a subject which would allow me to look at the entire late 19th, early 20th century West um, around a single theme. And also at the time, I wondered why historians, did, unless they were business historians, did not write about corporations. And so corporations, the entire West, I turned to railroads. And the next step was fairly easy. I thought, well, I'll start looking at the railroads. But once I looked at them, I realized, well, there are railroads in Canada and railroads in Mexico, which are very similar. So the book became Mexico, Canada, and the United States. And initially, I thought this is going to be pretty easy. It'll just be comparative. I'll just look at how they operate and see the differences between countries. And what I found out is it's one big railroad. Um, my guys are the same guys, whether they're in Mexico, whether they're in Canada, whether they're in the United States. Capital for all the roads comes to the, from the same place. The technology from all the roads comes from the same place. The roads are operated really as an interlocked system. So at that point, as is usual in my books, I realized that I did not know what I was talking about. And the book became very different from the one I set out to write. Um, as I'll talk about later with David, it, I started out thinking that these are going to be powerful, efficient corporations. What I'm going to be seeing is the birth of modernity in the North American West, where you don't really expect to see it. And I did find the birth of modernity in the North American West. It's just not the modernity I expected to find. My modernity has as much to do with failure as it does with success. You, you, one way to read your book, at least in my view, is uh, it's, uh, you conduct a kind of running argument with the great uh, Austrian-born, uh, longtime Harvard economist, uh, Joseph Schumpeter, uh, who is uh, most well known, I suppose, for the phrase that uh, creative destruction, that the history of capitalism, the history of the modern economies is all about creative destruction. Uh, and he, as I read it at least, is one of your principal foils as you advance your own argument. So you want to just tell us a little bit about your regard for Schumpeter and the way you've taken him on? Well, first of all, I admire Schumpeter a great deal. Um, what I do see is creative destruction taking place all over the West. I mean, it was Schumpeter's great insight that what capitalism does is it's always a revolutionary system in that it always has to destroy the old to bring in the new. Um, and Schumpeter was perfectly right in seeing that going on in the way corporations operate in the late 19th century. Where I began to differ is that in Schumpeter's account, things always turn out well. Um, entrepreneurs always, in fact, if they fail, they're just eliminated. And if they succeed, they're de facto bringing in a new world. Well, my entrepreneurs fail and bring in a new world. And they also fail and make a whole lot of money. And that became the puzzle for me as I went on. I mean, I agreed with Schumpeter, but I didn't see the same results coming out of it, and I really um, wanted to understand why, how this process really worked, why virtually every railroad